Hello everyone, it's Leah, and it and I uh, fumbled right out of the bag, <laughs> right out of the bag, right out of the basket. I don't know the sayings. Oh my god, <laughs> it's Monday, and I'm recording the voiceover. Clearly, my brain's just not ready for Monday. Um, okay, so hello. And welcome to today's time lapse during one of my healing with art sessions. For today's video voiceover, I wanted to go over the benefits of using a limited color palette. But before I dived into the benefits, I just want to go over the supplies that I'm using just in case you're like, oh my God, that looks so cool. I want that color because I know I do the exact same thing when I watch other artists on YouTube and on, you know, Skillshare. I'm like, ooh, what is that? I now must know it and look for it. Um, so what I'm drawing with right here is a, a fluorescent pink marker, paint marker. And I'm going to create a separate video showcasing it, this thing, because I actually mixed the colors individually myself inside. Um, it's really fun so far. I've only used it a couple of times and it's, it's interesting. So I'm going to test it out and then I'll create a separate video for you guys. The colors that I am using for this painting, however, are my acrylic gouaches. And I really love using my acrylic gouache right now for healing with art time, mostly because Holbein and Turner, which are the two brands that I use, have such a beautiful color array. And I have so many different colors. I have too many colors. Um, they really do just give you a starting point. Like you don't have to mix colors. You can just use them straight out of the tube, which I think is really great, but that is something I'm going to discuss with you later on. So the colors that I am using, I'm using Holbein's beige as my um, mixing color, my main mixing color to reduce um, vibrancy. So instead of using white to make it more pastel-y, I'm using beige to reduce vibrancy. I am also using Turner's yellow ochre, Holbein's coral red, Holbein's ash rose, and Holbein's shell pink. So when it comes to creating you know, during your healing with art time, you can do anything you want. But I often find that for myself, as an individual who's obsessed with colors and collecting paint colors, I can get overwhelmed with picking the right color for the day. I do have a couple of systems in place to help me with that. And one of them is having a deck of color swatches. So I create card-shaped cards card shaped cards, <laughs> card shaped swatches of all the colors that I have. So then I can pick through them, sit them next to each other, see if those colors go well together, and then pick out my palette that way versus just going off of the color on the tubes as well. Cause sometimes the tube color is not the same as the paint color. Um, having these color swatches is really helpful, but for this day, I actually felt quite overwhelmed. I have just gotten off of working on a, um, a huge canvas painting that I've been working on the last few days. And I wanted to unwind from that and step away from it, clear my mind so I could get into working on some client work for the week. And I stared at all my colors and I actually felt overwhelmed. There was too many options. I, I was like, oh, I really like this color. No, I should do this color. No, this color. No, this color. No, this color. In the end, I grabbed four random colors and the beige to mix. And that's how I created this painting. And I wasn't expecting the coral red to go well with the painting. I wasn't sure if the pink was going to go well, even though I think pink goes with everything. Um, and especially the yellow ochre, it's a beautiful color, but it doesn't always go with other colors. But the trick to using a limited color palette is to mix those colors with each other. By mixing these colors together, even if you're just mixing it a little bit by adding a little bit of uh, coral to the ash rose or a little bit of 
coral to the yellow ochre or yellow ochre to the coral. You know, you are creating a color family. Can you guys hear my dog barking in the background? Because like, man, is he going berserk. It's garbage day. And uh, <laughs> he barks on garbage day. Um, you know, you're creating a color family where these colors may might not normally go well together but when you start mixing them they then be, get uh the same tonage mixed in with it which then makes it so that they go together i'm really hoping what i just said made sense if it didn't let me know in the comment section below and i'll i'll answer any questions that you have and try to do better by clarifying myself via words via type not via spoken now the benefit to doing a limited color palette is all about reducing the unknown. So take away the stress, the added stress of having to select colors when you have so many to pick from. It takes away the stress of having to figure out mixing the perfect colors. It takes away the unknowns of whether or not your painting's gonna like be amazing because guess what this painting doesn't have to be amazing i could have selected colors that didn't go to well together at all but it's all about unwinding and relaxing and when you're working on a limited color palette you want to keep it to a minimum of four or five colors five might be a little much the point is making it so that by reducing your colors you're creating harmony you are finding different ways to use the same color more than once. You are mixing them to create colors that are related to each other. They're relative to one another. It gives you more time to focus on your relaxation, what you need while working in your art journal. Like for me, I need music. I need to just zone out, pick a subject that I'm really interested in, like flowers, and put on some music and sing along versus focusing on something else. It lets me shake off the day, shake off the anxiety, shake off the pressure that I'm feeling. Um, ooh, also, before I forget, as I mentioned in last week's video about being interested in creating playlists for you guys on Spotify, I have decided to do it. Um, I'm going to create some playlists, make them public, and then share a link to them somehow. I don't know how. I know it could be done. I'm just not tech savvy, you know? Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to do it. I'll share links in the description sections. I'll have it on my Instagram and TikTok. Can I do that on TikTok? Can you have a link on TikTok? See, I told you I'm not really tech savvy. I'm like a 90 year old when it comes to technology sometimes. Actually, that's mean to 90-year-olds. I bet there are people out there that know how to use things better than I do and they're in their 90s. Anyways, um, okay, before we get to the end of the video, I do want to go over just one more thing that can be done with a limited color palette. And I know I had mentioned that you can use them and mix them and create a color family, but what if you don't want to mix them? What if you picked out colors that just won't mix well together? Well, you don't have to. And honestly, you don't even have to mix them if you don't feel like it. You can just use the colors as is and focus more on color placement versus color mixing. So you can use one color and dedicate it just to the leaves. Use one color, dedicate it just to the petals of the daffodils or the inside section of the daffodils or the daffodil leaves. You know, like you can create a limited color palette where it's all about using solid color next to one another, but not mixed. You can layer them on top and do so many different things. Okay, now I am about to reach the end of the video. And before that happens, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it did help with you. I know I fumbled, fumbled. I'm, I'm, I really shouldn't try to use that analogy again, seeing as how I screwed it up so bad at the beginning. <laughs> Anyways, I know I mumbled a bit and I fumbled a bit. 
and I rambled a bit, but I hope it was helpful for you. If you do have any questions about colors or selecting limited colors or anything like that, let me know in the comments section below. I am in the process of creating some resources for you guys so it'll be easier for you during your healing with art time, especially when it comes to selecting colors, working with colors, and different supplies that you can use. And I'm really excited to release those videos as they come. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up and I hope you do. If you are interested in healing with art and art videos and learning more about art supplies, hit that subscribe button because I plan on posting a lot more videos and I have several more in my archives as well. And before the video actually ends, let's take a moment to just take a deep breath in. And let it out. Okay, guys, have a nice day. And until next time, stay magical.